Hey folks, welcome back to the Transplant Helper again today. My name is Jim Merle, and today I'm going to be answering a viewer's question about the Evo Shield and whether or not I deem it to be effective, whether or not I've received the actual injections or not. Do I feel as if this could be effective in helping to prevent COVID-19 in the situation of us as potential transplant patients, me being a heart transplant recipient particularly, should I really go out and get this? Well, with that being said, let me say up front without a shadow of a doubt that what I'm about to say is absolutely based upon my opinion, my research, and the things that I have discovered, not the things that others have necessarily experienced or what they may have discovered. I know, like with anything related to COVID-19, whether it be the vaccines themselves, all the boosters, whether it's made by any manufacturer, and including medications like Evo Shield, that it is possible that everybody can have a different experience and certainly possible everyone can have a different opinion. However, I will say this, what my information is primarily going to be based on today is not coming from some outside resource, it's not written about some, or not coming from some articles that are written about the Evo Shield or any studies that came from without. This actually, every bit of the information I share with you today can be found on the Evo Shield dot com website and i'll have it linked below if you want to go and read this for yourself i'm going to be sharing some of it up on the screen nonetheless but i do want you to see and recognize this is coming from their own information okay and if a, if a company is going to do anything generally on their website it's going to be totally promoting uh, the giving of their product or the use of their product in a certain situation although i believe evo shield does some of that obviously they they would be very poor at marketing if they didn't at the same time time i think they're being very open and honest about their product its uses its capabilities and even some of its risk okay so that's what we're going to be using today so for a little bit you're going to see more of the uh, screen share from from my computer here then you'll see my face that's probably good for you but i will be showing you that directly so let's jump over the screen right here first of all you can recognize yes we're on evershield.com uh, so we're not looking at again an external website talking about them we're looking at what they say about themselves and the very first thing I noticed at the very top of the page is it says the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, has issued an emergency authorization to make Evershield and also making it available for COVID-19 pandemic. And then it states Evershield is not an FDA approved medication in the United States. So I think that's important to know. I don't know whether you trust the FDA or not, if your opinion of them may have changed or not, but it does say, and I'm thankful they do, they say right at the top of the page, we are not FDA approved. We're only being given emergency authorization. That's all. So that's all they intend to do. That's what they claim to do. And I think that's, again, that's being honest about it. So that's the first thing you probably need to know about this as and before you sat down with your doctor is the fact that you're aware that this is not FDA approved, but it has been given emergency authorization. So let's look at some of the other facts. We'll just scroll down a little bit more. Um, here, here's some more things I see kind of on the main top portion of the web page. It says Evershield is for pre-exposure or prophylactic. That's preventative for preventative uh, care of COVID-19 infection. That's true. It says, and then in the first paragraph here, Evershield is an investigational medication used in adults and adolescents 12 years old and above, it says, who weigh a certain weight here, 40 kilograms or 88 pounds, for pre-exposure prophylactics, again, that's preventative, for pre-exposure prophylactics uh, for preventative of COVID-19 in persons who are. And then it makes very clear statements here, and I think we need to notice this. Then it makes very clear statements, those people to whom this is directed. And when we read this, you're probably going to say to yourself, well, I'm a transplant patient. I'm immunosuppressed. It's talking about me. And it is. It is. That's why we're reading it. Uh, so it starts out here in the first paragraph of that. It says the first little bullet point. It says, uh, who have moderate and severe immune compensation uh, due to a medical condition and have received immunosuppressive medications and treatments and may not mount an adequate immune uh, system or immune response to COVID-19 vaccine, okay? So I kind of fall in that boat, a lot of us do, and that is, yes, I'm immune compromised. If you're a transplant patient, in order to prevent rejection, you are immune compromised. So that's the first thing I notice in this. That is absolutely true. Check the box. That is me. Uh, where I fall into a weird category personally, and this is just personally for me, is what I have found is I'm not as immune 
compromised as you might assume. I'm nine years post-transplant. I'm on extremely low doses of those immunocompromising medications. And so when things have come up before me in the last several years at least, you know, the general flus, colds, viruses, including COVID-19, I have either had really good response to that, as in my body has fought and done well. I think I've been diagnosed or, or tested positive for COVID two different times. I beat it both times, basically at home by myself without any medical intervention, okay? Other than I think I may have gotten a, an antibiotic one of the two times, but I, I beat it on my own. And uh, along with a couple of other things, which I'll link the video up here, uh, I have determined personally that I haven't taken the vaccines, I haven't taken the boosters, and I have not taken this. And that's on the advice of my doctor for another day. Again, it's for that video, not this one. But I haven't taken that. But I have responded okay, I guess you could say, with my immune system. So, yes, I fit that I'm immune compromised, but it also adds there and have not mounted a proper immune response. I have mounted a proper immune response. So I'm not sure right here where I fall yet, but you may be different. Maybe everything that comes up, you know, that goes through the family or goes through the neighborhood, you catch it. You might be more need more in need of this than I was, okay? So the second bullet point says also this vaccine is for those whom the vaccine with with any available COVID-19 COVID vaccine, according to the approved authorized schedule, is not recommended due to a history of severe adverse reactions to the COVID-19 vaccine or COVID-19 vaccine ingredients. Of course, that, that is what it is. If you've taken the COVID-19 vaccine, you have had a confirmed uh, ill effect or side effect from that, then this you don't need this either, basically is what they're saying. Now, again, in my case, I'm special in that I have actually dealt with a couple of different issues in my past, cardiac related, um, that have caused me not to, my doctors not to recommend specifically, individually, the vaccines as much. For example, I've had myocarditis. And one of the things they have just had to come out and say is that in a certain age group, I forget if it's 18 to 45, somewhere in there, I'm falling right in it. Um, in a certain age group, the, the precedence of myocarditis or the presenting of myocarditis is a lot higher after those boosters come in. So again, not recommended for me. But that's not this vaccine. This does tell us, however, if you have had an adverse effect as a result of the vaccines, Stop it right here. Evil Shield is not for you, okay? So, you, yes, you may be immune compromised. I'm sure we all are as transplant recipients. It may be that you've had a response to it that was healthy and adequate to COVID-19. If you have, this may not do anything. If you haven't, this is perfect. But if you've had those vaccines and had an adverse response, which I know are rare, so likely none of you have had that. Uh, then this may be for you. So that, so far, so good on that. Now, the next little paragraph, I'll kind of scroll up for it. Uh, Evyshield is investigational because it is still being studied. Did you hear that? Because it is still being studied. There is limited information known about the safety and the effectiveness of using Evyshield for pre-exposure or prophylactics for preventative of COVID-19. I think that's a key right here, okay? They're telling you up front, it's investigational. It's still being studied. The information is limited. Now, someone can say to that, well, all the information is limited in COVID-19. You're right. It's limited, and it constantly evolves. So how much weight we put in this, I don't know. But again, this is their own website, and this is what they say front and center, top page, basically top two or three paragraphs in that, that it is just being used and being studied for this. They go on to add to that in the next section or next sentence of this. They say, uh, the safety and effectiveness of using Evil Shield for pre-exposure or prophylactic prevention of COVID-19. Evil Shield is not authorized, not authorized for post-exposure prophylactic or the prevention of COVID-19. So it says, look, if you've already got it, if you're symptomatic, you got COVID, this is not the one for you, okay? And by the way, the vaccines are not for you then either. Once you catch the virus, once you have it, you don't run out and get vaccines. You don't run out and get Evil Shield. This is not 
a treatment medication, okay? This is a preventative, a prophylactic type medication. But this is what they say. Now, Evil Shield also adds, I'm in the next little subparagraph here, uh, Evil Shield is authorized only for the duration and the declaration of the circumstance exists justifying the authorization, a lot of T-I-O-N words, uh, of the emergency use of Evil Shield unless the authorization is terminated or revoked sooner. So basically what they're saying is, look, right now we've got emergency use uh, permissions. They may snatch that at any minute. So I would hate to be the person who finally beats around the bush, makes a decision, goes in and gets Evil Shield. They get their first, maybe even there's two of these, first and or second of those boosters, vaccines, and then boom, they pull the emergency authorization. How does that make you feel? I don't know. <laughs> but that's that's at least what, again, they're admitting this on their own website. This is not outside information. So I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful that they're being uh, transparent in this case for sure. Now, then they give, there's a lot of information. I'll scroll on through here. They, they give you some information on getting started. How do you know if you're immune compromised? There's no question about that. If you're a transplant patient, we're immune compromised. We don't have to, we should read this, but we don't have to pick through it because it, it applies. Um, go on down, it says, uh, how will I receive Evil Shield? Now, this is where they're telling you, you're basically going to get uh, two injections, then you're going to come back and get two more a little bit later and, and what it is capable of doing. The next section, what should I tell my healthcare provider uh, before I receive Evil Shield? Well, it tells them again to tell them if you've, had COVID, if you tested positive, you got blood clots. It's just the typical stuff. Are you breastfeeding? Are you pregnant? Uh, do you have a serious illness they need to know about, which they we kind of do <laughs> if we're transplant recipients. We, they need to know about that first and foremost. And then there's a little paragraph right here I'll try to bring to the center of the screen. The use of Evil Shield, here's what it says. The use of Evil Shield does not replace vaccination against COVID-19. For more information about this medication and it's authorized for treatment and prevention of COVID-19, visit the FDA website. So then they put you the link. So again, this is not a treatment medication, if you will, and it's not a replacement for those vaccines, okay? That's something we need to know. Now, with all that being said, and I'll go back, not to reread any of it, but I'll go back and focus back up here. Remember how we started with this by them telling us it is a prophylactic or preventative for COVID-19? How we started out with them telling us that, you know, if you are infected with SARS-CoV-19, don't get this. But if you are not, if you're clear at the moment, and you're immune compromised, get it. If you've not had a proper immune response, uh, get it. Okay, that's that's what they said in the first few paragraphs, as well as they let us know, uh, and I'm thankful for it, that Evil Shield is an investigational medication. Okay, this is in a trial. It's in a test. And if you take this, you're being a part of that test. Now, if you want to be a part of the test, that's good. That's wonderful. Somebody's got to do it. And I'm thankful to, to you who may choose this. But do know that you are in a trial, okay? You are in a trial. And like my team explained to me, they said, Jim, we don't believe, and this is their personal opinion, okay? They said, Jim, we don't believe that these Evil Shields uh, injections will do harm. They don't believe they'll do harm. Now, that's still, you know, the jury is out on that. We'll have to see. That'll be long-term, short-term. It is an investigational type thing. They said, we don't believe it'll do harm. They just don't see the personal benefit, okay? Even the Evo Shield stated, you know, this might work, it might not. We're just giving it a shot. They don't see the personal benefit. And I'm thankful that my team, UAB Hospital, always takes an individualized approach to me. They always set me down. And even though there may be some blanket policies about vaccinations or something like this being offered, whatever, there may be some blanket policies, and there probably are with all of our transplant centers, they are really good about individualizing the care, uh, like with the vaccines. Okay, Jim, you've had myocarditis, pericarditis. Uh, these vaccines are going to put you at more risk. Again, another video explains that, but they're going to put you at risk, so not the best thing for you. In this case, they don't expect any more risk being added. Everyone I've talked to in the Facebook groups or that have texted me, called me, asked me about this, I've had nobody say I had an adverse immediate effect that I could show came from taking Evil Shield. Okay, nobody's done that. But what they're expressing to me is that, look, it may be low risk, but it also may be low in its effectiveness as well. It's just not been proven yet. And I know nothing ever is until it is. It's not proven until it is, but nothing has been proven. But what really, really, in my case, I'm a heart transplant recipient. I, I would say 
85% of you watch this channel are heart transplant recipients. Okay, we're, we're in that same boat. Yes, they're heart, lung, liver, kidney, pancreas, tissue. You know, they're, uh, this is a community for everybody. But I'm a heart transplant recipient. Many of you are. And that's the part of this that really concerns me. Okay, do we meet the criteria of we're immunocompromised? Yes. Might we meet the criteria up top of there also? I'll, am I looking at it again? I'll pull it back up. But might we meet the criteria that our bodies will not respond very well uh, to COVID and we might not have the right re immune response? Yeah, that, we sure might. Uh, are we aware already that, yes, this is a, you know, a trial type medication? I'll go back to that paragraph. It's under investigation and we don't need to expect too much on the, on either side of it. I am at least, and I'm trying to share that with you. They are at least their website. What concerns me though, you see right here below this blue portion, you see on the screen, there's a white portion. When you get down the white portion, it starts telling you about getting started with that. We looked at a little bit of this. How will I receive it? What should I tell my healthcare provider? But when you get farther down, it says important safety information. Okay, this actually on their website, and I'll go back to it in a minute because I don't want to keep scrolling you. But on their website, they give you, you can get, before you ever go to the doctor, you can get that printout. You know how when they give you a vaccine like this, a flu vaccine or pneumonia or, you know, tetanus, not tetanus, um, what is it? Oh, man. Anyway, the stuff that gets, that hurts so bad, sh shingles. Vaccine. They'll give you that printout that comes with that, and it's very, very detailed about the potentials and the ability and the lack, the capability of that vaccine and uh, the side effects. Look, if you pull up the side effects to any of your medic my medications under there is why I'm pointing. If you pull up the side effects to any medication, to any vaccine, they're going to blow your mind and scare you to death. That's just straight up what it is. What does interest me about this section of the evil, evilshield.com website, again, I think they're being open and honest about it. I'm thankful for that. As it talks about this, quote, important safety information, it says, do not take Evil Shield if you have severe reactions to Evil Shield. And again, that's always the funny one on the commercial, right? If you're allergic to this medicine, don't take it. How do I know I'm allergic to it until I take it? I get that. Uh, but then it kicks into possible side effects. Of course, none of the side effects ever sound like something you want. These, for example, I'll pull more toward the middle of the screen. A trouble breathing, chills, tiredness, weakness, fast heart rate, chest pain, discomfort, nausea, vomiting. Uh, that's a bad day already. That is a bad, bad day if you deal with those. Uh, any of those are a combination of those. So Again, that's par for the course for any medication. But my concern, and this is, I hope you've watched toward the end of the video. I know it's been long, but I want to be thorough with this. My concern for you and I, I'm a heart transplantation. If you transplant, I can't talk today. I'm a heart transplant patient. You are, many of you as well. My concern comes right here. They have a whole section dedicated to cardiac heart events, okay? A whole section dedicated to that. And let me read you a little bit about what it says. It says, in the clinical trial for Evil Shield, more people with cardiac risk, and it brackets, including a history of heart attack, experienced serious cardiac events than those who did not receive Evil Shield. It is not known if these events are related to Evil Shield or to the underlying medical conditions. And it says, contact your health care provider, basically to talk this over. Okay. Now, again, I think they're being open and honest with this, and I'm thankful. But they say directly here on their website, they dedicate, and you scroll on, there's more to read, not much more to read. There's not much more to read, but you can scroll on and you can find out. They give you a little bit more information, but it does, it is, it is intriguing to me that they give a whole section here directly to nothing but cardiac heart events. And they say up front, if you have a history of a heart condition, I qualify heart transplant patient, myocarditis, pericarditis, uh, <laughs> You, you name it, I've had it. I've, right now, I have an aortic valve that's been replaced. I'm still dealing with a little bit of a little bit of a heart. You know, just I, we're heart patients. If you have a history of that, they have seen. Okay, they can't explain, but they have seen an increase in cardiac events among those who have had a cardiac history, 
and taken evil shield. So basically they're telling us, if you get this vaccine, they'll put it right in your, one of your arms, maybe this one. I, I like this one because I'm left-handed. But they'll put it right here in your arm in that muscle tissue. If you take this vaccine, they're telling you on their website, if you are a cardiac, have cardiac risk factors or a history of a heart attack or any cardiac type stuff, you could assume. They know that they have seen people who've experienced, quote, experienced serious cardiac events. More so than those who did not take Evil Shield. So what would I do if I were in my shoes and yours? I, I recommend to you the things that I, that I do. I would say, one, I probably wouldn't run out to the doctor and ask them, can you give me the evil shield? I probably wouldn't do that. You may choose to, that's, that's fine. Two, if I did go to my transplant team or any doctor for that matter, and they sat me down and say, I noticed that you're immunosuppressed and that uh, we've got this trial going on with evil shield, and I noticed that you might qualify for that. Would you like to get that vaccine today? Stop. You may not refuse it. You, you'll make that choice, but stop right there and explain to them if they're not already aware of it. Your team hopefully would be, but if they're not aware of it, stop right there and say, look, I, I've studied up on this. I didn't look at a third party's uh, opinion on this. Uh, yeah, I saw the transplant helpers video, but he, he, he all he did was show me to go to the evilshield.com website and we scrolled together through that page, and I saw specifically, one, this is not for everybody. Two, it may not help as much as it hurts, although there's a low risk of, of anything adverse happening. But three, in my case, I am a cardiac patient, okay? I am a cardiac patient. I take cardiac medications. I deal with cardiac issues on a regular basis. They told me on their website, not that great of an idea. <laughs> just not a great idea, okay? It could increase, and they've been saying, experience, quote, serious cardiac events more than those who did not receive it. So why do I want to increase my potential for a, quote, serious cardiac event? I don't. I don't. So to answer the question from way back, have you taken Evil Shield? No. Uh, do you plan to, Jim? At this point, absolutely no. I don't. Do I think that that's a blanket statement that applies to everyone? No. No, I don't. No, I do not. You've got to make your own choice. I pray that you've got a team that is willing to help you in making your own choice. But just be aware of the facts. This is a prophylactic preventative medication. It is not to be taken if you currently have COVID. It doesn't cure COVID, okay? It doesn't even improve it. It's to be taken as a preventative when you're not sick. Be aware it may not be as effective as you hope. But that's a part of a trial, right? Be aware it may have some risk that you're not aware of. That's a part of a trial, right? But for me as a cardiac patient, they admit it will increase the risk. They can't directly tie that, but they admit they've seen it. They admit it is a fact. And so for that, I'm out. I'm out. Like on Shark Tank, I'm out. For that reason, I'm out. And uh, you have to make your choice. But thank you so much for joining me today. I know this has been lengthy. And uh, hey, I'll admit right here at the end of the video, if you would have went to the Evo Shield website, you would have read what I read. But I, but I think it's good sometimes to sit down and talk about this. I would like to know in the comments. I'm not arguing with you. Uh, I'm not looking for anyone to argue with each other. So in the comments, you know, keep it nice, keep it clean. But have you taken Evo Shield? I'm going to expect already you haven't had any adverse effects. I can expect that already more than likely, but have you taken Evil Shield? If so, did your team recommend it? You know, did you volunteer for it? I don't know. Just tell us a little bit about where you came to the conclusion of taking it or maybe not taking it. Again, you keep it nice. I've got a delete button is right beside the one I can check mark you to accept you as a wonderful comment. I don't like doing that, but uh, I also don't, uh, I don't enjoy people being unkind. I don't expect that any of you will, but in case somebody jumps in that's a stranger to the community, not going to be the place for it, uh, but feel free to comment and let me know what you think about this, what you've experienced. I would love to know that because we're working together as a community. We're growing together, and uh, this is certainly one of the ways we can. So to answer that question, uh, again, about Evil Shield, hey, do your own research. Sit down with your team, discuss it, see if it's right for you, but be aware it may not be in the case of us as heart transplant recipients. Thanks so much for joining me. Until next time. Stay stronger, friends. 